You have a Rob McCoy right back here, only he's Mexican. He's Spanish. He gets the plight of the Latino people, which is the predominant area of this district. He gets the plight of the poor because he's been poor. He gets the plight of a business owner sacrificing everything in order to be able to get something together for their livelihood and then losing everything and having to commit it to God and start all over. He gets the plight of a godly man. And I look up to him. And I'm asking every one of you, it is not illegal. You can stand up. You can have a voter registration booth in your, in your foyer. You as a pastor can stand up and say, I, not the church, but I am supporting Pedro Rios. I need everybody to get out to vote. If you're not registered to vote, I need you to register to vote. Please welcome my prayer partner. And I declare the next assembly member for the 32nd No, please take the seat. It's okay. You gotta, you gotta sit down. It's all right. You know, uh, thank you for being here today, and uh, thank you, Sister Shannon. Thank you. Uh, just, I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much, and obviously, thank you to the Almighty. And uh, you know, uh, I'm a history teacher, and I, I love. Uh, I have always loved to share with my students. Uh, um, uh, historical themes and one one uh, one area of history that I've loved to study is uh, World War II uh, in particular the the Holocaust and how the Holocaust came about you know how could it have been that Germany at the time was one of the most modern nations that we had a very intelligent uh, nation a nation that had been uh, producing technology very advanced in every aspect socially uh, it was a world power and how is it that Germany all of a sudden uh, lost its, its moral fiber and it went on into, into uh, killing millions and millions of individuals, right? How, how did that happen? How did that occur? Well, let me just tell you uh, how the, just in particular, uh, uh, the Jewish community, how, how it began to be targeted. Uh, once Hitler got into power, he did not immediately pa pass laws that just shocked everybody. He began to uh, pass laws very slowly to the point that people were not feeling it. They began to accept it. And that's exactly what's been going on here in our state. You see, we're in a comfort zone and we think from our regular perspective, we think as long as our economic is okay, as long as we have food on our table, mm -hmm. as long as we're able to pay our homes and we drive our cars and we're, stay, we're still able to go out and dine, we're okay. Well, that's the way, the same way that uh, 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 the Jewish community looked at it in Germany. In fact, they had been established there for hundreds of years, and they were very prosperous. They were business people. They were bankers. They were successful individuals. And let me give you some examples of some of the laws that were passed. Uh, for example, Hitler announced one day that Jews can no longer walk on sidewalks. They had to walk uh, on, on, on the gutter, on the road. So they were not allowed. Only German individuals of German descent were allowed to walk on those sidewalks. And Jews thought, well, you know, after all, we have been in a recession and, and, and Hitler is not that bad. He's going to get us out and we're going to have food. So it's okay. They accepted it. And the next thing was, the next law, for example, came was that they had to wear the Star of David. And many thought, well, well, what's wrong with wearing the Star of David? After all, we are of Jewish descent. So they did that. And then eventually it got worse and worse. Eventually their homes were seized. And they were moved from their regular communities that were moved into ghettos. Enclosed areas just for Jews. And eventually that, then from then they were moved on to the concentration camps. Where they were murdered and killed by the millions. And why do I share that story with you is because... That is exactly what is going on today with our nation and with our state. Very slowly, and already the pastors and, and Shannon Grove, has, they've shared with you some of the laws that are being passed. How me as a, as a school teacher, I as a school teacher, I have to teach these items to our kids. Mm -hmm. Immoral things that I know within my heart that it's not going to be any good. We see school violence. I work with at-risk youth. These are students that have been expelled from our schools for various reasons, for drugs. 
And we're talking about, we're not talking about high school kids. We're talking about young kids. I mean, third graders being expelled. Fourth graders, fifth graders being sent to our programs. It's called our alternative ed programs where counties take these students because they must be educated. And they're coming in for drugs, for weapons, for misbehavior problems, for mental issues, for many things. And you should see the number of students that are being recommended into our program daily. Yeah. It's by the hundreds. And that's just one county, imagine throughout the state. And we wonder what's going on, what's happening? Why is this happening to us? And you know, oftentimes, uh, as a candidate, I must address the business folks. And business people, you know, they want to hear business uh, uh, matters. They, it's very hard to, to at times, uh, take a deep conversation such as the one that we're having and be able to talk about the fact of the matter, the core of the matter, which is godly principles. And I have to be uh, very truthful to them. I, have to, I, I tell them, look, we're in a drought. We're in a very heavy drought, but the fact of the matter is that I cannot bring you water. There is no military might, no economic might, no social might that can work the way the Almighty has it worked, worked it out where you have this water rising from the ocean and, and, and then the wind blows and clouds formed and then rain comes down. Yeah. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. Because if we had figured that out, then we will, ourselves would be God and we would solve this drought problem. But the only one that can bring that water is God. And then what do we do with the water once we have it? Then that's when we come in. And that's where I come in and tell them, look, that's where we can build dams. And we can store that water so that just like when, uh, when Egypt went through that drought and Joseph was assigned to, to take care of that. For seven years they were in a drought and years of prosperity. But then seven years of drought was, were going to come in and Joseph was assigned to that task. Well, in the same way. When rain comes in, we must, we must get that rain, store it, and then do something that's, that's good for us. But I tell people, God is the one. We, we, in our society, in the secular community, it's turned the other way around. We want to place economics first, and we want to place God at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And you and I know that if we do it the opposite way, and if we put God at the top of everything, then things are going to work out for the best. Our, we're going to have water flowing. We're going to have our youth. Our youth are going to be sane. Our violence will come down. Teenage pregnancy will drop tremendously. We will prosper. We will grow. Just like in the Old uh, Testament when we've seen that when the, when the righteous kings would, would be right with God, Israel would prosper. But when, when wicked kings came in and they became immoral, and they follow other heathen gods mm -hmm. that Israel suffered. And I myself, you know, God has taken me through a process. I, I am the first one to tell you here that I'm a sinful man. I've realized and daily I come to, to Christ and say, Lord, please have pity on me. And you know what? In 2012, at 5.30 in the morning, when I finally saw that I wasn't going to make it, that I, that I was going to lose that election, I began to cry as, 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 a, as a little boy, just crying. But as I cried, I knew that there was also something beautiful occurring in my heart because I knew that in, in God's mighty wisdom, He knew what He was doing with me. And you know what? For a few days, I have to be sincere with you, my, my faith was shaken. And I said, God, we had, we had been praying and what happened here? And you know what? As the days went on, I began to see in my heart things that I would have not seen had I not lost. I began to see pride so much pride that I said, oh Lord, how could I have had that much pride? The pride of, get, of being in, 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 the, in the glamour of things. The pride of having these, these folks with a lot of money say, Pedro Rios, I got your back. I'm going to be there for you. Don't worry, buddy. We'll write you a big check. The pride of, of all of a sudden trusting man and not God. The pride of the attention. The pride of being able to say, you know what? I will be able to solve your problems. And other stains and sins in my heart that needed to be revealed to me. And in the process, in this new area, in this new uh, 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 journey for me, Shannon Grove came to me and, sa and said, Pedro, will you run? I said, Shannon, no, I, I, 
I, I don't want to do that. I want to live my, my private life quietly. I, I want to do some things. And I don't want to be in the spotlight no more. I, I could care less about the fame and the attention. And then Mark Abernathy calls me. This is two days. In fact, it was a Thursday morning. And, and, and papers needed to be filed the next day. We needed to get signatures. We needed to get things turned in. And uh, Mark says, Pedro, he says, God is calling us to, to set aside our comfort zones and to get into the fight. This is not a time where we can just sit peacefully with everything that's going on. This year we can do it. And you are the man to do it. And I said, Mark, give, give me. I said, Mark, I scratched my head. I was on the phone with him. I said, Mark, I tell you what, just, just, give, just give me two hours. And he, he's, he's right here. I'm not lying to you. Because like I said, I did not want, I could care less about the attention anymore. That, that, that was not for me anymore. And finally, at 10 o'clock, I said, Mark, let's do it. So he mobilized these young, young people that you see out there. They went out throughout the county. They got the signatures. And if you read the, if you read the California the very next day on Saturday morning, it says, Pedro Rios turned in his paperwork two minutes before the deadline. Two minutes before the deadline. And why, why do I share that with you? Because I'm not in for this no more. Remember, something had to die in me. And in my loss, it was good. Because no longer do I want the fame or the attention or the glamour. I know that sooner or later, I'm going to die. Just like all of us. And listen to this. About six years ago, my brother, Martin, at 6 o'clock in the morning, he had breakfast with my mother. Just like you and I are having a beautiful breakfast right here. And by 10 o'clock, I got the call. My brother Poncho, and he says, Pedro, Martin se mató. And I was shocked. I, I cannot believe it. It was, it was like a nightmare. And I left my work, and as I was driving, and I thought, all, all I could think was, God giveth and God taketh. And we went through that pain. But that, that incident in our lives had a profound effect on me. That it finally realized, indeed, just what the Bible states, that we're just, that man is just a, a, a flower that, that rises for a moment, and then it, it, it is gone. So we're on this journey, my friends. You and I are going to leave this earth sooner or later. No, no, and we have a perfect opportunity to bring change. You see, change doesn't happen when everything is going good. History has shown time after time that people step into the fight when things are not going right. And right now is the perfect time to step in. Right now is the time to more than ever get ourselves involved with prayer, private prayer. More than ever it is time to go out there and be courageous. And that's why I'm courageous to stand up. And you know what? People tell me, well, what do you feel about Rudy Salas? Are you have any anger? No. The Bible states that we pray for our enemies. That we bless our enemies. And I think about this and I tell people, how can, how can I expect Rudy Salas to act uh, any different when he doesn't know God. You see, we know that, that, that people that don't know God, they, they work in different ways. They, they, they do whatever it takes to achieve the goal, and that means doing wicked things because that is the natural tendency of man. Of man. You see, and we must remember when we weren't there, when we were in their place, before we came to know Christ. So let's pray for, for Rudy Salas. Let's pray that he will be reached by the Almighty, Amen. that his heart will change because prayer is powerful. Amen. And my friends, the one thing that I will ask you today is that you pray for me as we journey. And at the end of the day, no matter what happens, just like in, in, the, in the book of Habakkuk, towards the end, it says, even if, if there's no cattle in, in, in the corrals, even if, if the fig tree does not flower, whatever happens, you will be my God. And you know what? In the first election, I was thinking, man, God, what's going to happen when I lose, when I win or lose? I was afraid of my pride. And this, this round, it's not about that. May God's will be done. But the Bible states that if we clamor, and that if we clamor in private and sincerely, God gives us the, the desires of our heart. So thank you, and thank you for being here. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you, Pastor Harry. Thank you, Pastor Powell. Thank you, all of you. God bless you all. And may you guys have a wonderful day.